through um, in this episode our experience and we also do a little bit of a deep dive into some of the marinas and the anchorages that we stayed at which will help those who are thinking about chartering or just coming and cruising in um, Croatia. During that eight days uh, we got all kinds of weather. Um, I guess um, this is the thing in the Mediterranean. Uh, we got calms, we got high winds, we got rain, thunderstorms. All in one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's constantly changing. Um, and the wind is kind of uh, unpredictable here compared to where we come from. It's which very is gusty. Area. Yeah. Um, one day it can blow from south, north, east, west, and it changes all the time. Um, but um, overall, the trip was great. Um, the, the the area is just perfect for sailing. Um, the the places that we went to were really charming and historic. I really enjoyed it. Um, we had a great time, and the boat uh, uh, performed really well. Um, we had a great time with the boat and um, didn't, didn't have any issues, major issues. Um, we performed really well. Uh, Considering we haven't really been sailing this past year because our sailing club closed down. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it was a good refresher. So um, check out our video. Hope you enjoy the journey. Hey guys. So we have left the marina for about a seven or so day um, trip to bump around some of the islands um, nearby. We are about two, two and a half hours into our sail and it's going great right now. Um, it was a little bumpy in the beginning. We uh, left the dock, uh, wind was blowing pretty hard between like 2025 with gusts in the 30s. and. Um, we had a little problem <laughs> with the uh, furling main. It, it rolled out right away, and we were like, we had too much canvas at, at once. Uh, so, uh, we had a little rusty moment. No. So, the last sail we did was uh, back in September on this boat. Yeah, so just we, a couple sails. We needed to refresh our memory about how, yeah. how the furling main works. We're not really, we don't really use furling mains, to be yeah. honest. This is new for us. We are used to the more classic batten. Um, yeah. main where you raise it with the halyard so we just got to learn the systems of the boat and that'll of course just come with a little time well so far so good everything's working uh, the boat has handling well um, the wind um, died down a little bit so uh, it's smooth sailing so far exactly we were planning to head over to an island uh, called Mignette but I think we just talked about it and since we are you know having a great sail um, going pretty fast right now um, but comfortable I think we're going to push it out a little farther and go to Portula. Yeah, let's, let's see when the wind takes us. <laughs> Milano de Corchula is about a 40 nautical mile passage. We enjoyed good winds averaging around 20 to 25 knots. At the moment, the only area at the Corchula Marina available to dock your boat overnight is circled in red. The ACI Corchula Marina is the main marina near the Old Town, and this summer of 2021, they're in the middle of a large construction project at the breakwater. Only one third of the marina is operational. Normally, they cram about 150 boats into this small marina. The depth here is two to seven meters, and southwest winds can cause a strong swell here. This is a very popular marina in high season, so be sure to call and make a reservation ahead of time, or be prepared to be sent away to one of the nearby anchorages. Also, I want to point out that the entrance is very tight and we witnessed a 55-foot cat struggling to enter. Costs at the ACI Corchula Marina for a 45-foot boat are about 686 kunas or 115 US dollars per night. It's okay if you're sharing the costs on a charter vacation with friends, but for liveaboards like us without an income, this is way too much. The only reason we are able to stay at marinas right now is because ACI has a special going on during the pandemic for their club members who have a contract with them at one of their marinas. This special allows us to stay the first night for free at any of their marinas in Croatia up until the end of June. So we are definitely taking advantage of this.
Now here is the reason everyone comes to Korchula, to experience and enjoy the historic and beautiful old town. Normally the streets are bustling with people, but once again, it feels like we have Croatia to ourselves. We say goodbye to Korchula Old Town and head to the west side of the island to anchor for the evening. We had an exciting sail with winds averaging 30 to 35 knots and we covered about 35 nautical miles. Once we tucked into our anchorage called Uvala Gradina, the winds calmed down. The bay was like a glass later in the evening so we fired up the barbecue and enjoyed a couple of sundowners. The anchorage here is free. We also noticed there are some mooring balls laid in the bay. Next day we collect the anchor and sail up in, in strong winds about 17 nautical miles northeast over towards the island of Var. So it's day three into our passage and we just arrived this afternoon to this gorgeous mooring field. The water is just perfect. It's like an emerald or turquoise green color. It was kind of reminding us of our times in the British Virgin Islands when right. we did some charters there. And um, we are especially happy to be here, um, all settled and enjoying a very mellow and relaxing afternoon because the first couple days of our passage, we had um, some intense weather. <laughs> <laughs> Wind was much higher than we expected, than the yeah. weather reports um, indicated. We had up to 35 uh, knots. And um, yeah, we, we weren't expecting it. And we you know we're just kind of getting, you know, settled into the boat but yeah Kamanj did great as the captain and the boat performed awesome so that yeah. was really good we had some strong winds um and um we weren't expecting it as danielle said and the night was kind of stressful for me because it was our first time anchoring in our own boat um in cb and um so i was really nervous uh, for an overnight of course yeah, yeah the wind wind piped up um I don't, I don't know not much maybe uh, 15 uh, to 20 but um, I wasn't able to sleep at all because I was so nervous everything went well the boat uh, and the anchor performed in fact the anchor was so set in <laughs> we, had, <laughs> we, we took had, us a, a moment to get it out today <laughs> <laughs> if we had known that yeah go yeah. on to would have gotten more z's last night The mooring balls in Uvala Vinogradiske on Sveti Clement Island cost about 370 kunas or 60 US dollars for a 45 foot boat. Anchoring is no longer allowed. This bay is normally busy and loud with party goers in the summertime. The next day after we left, we discovered a beautiful bay nearby where you can anchor in peace and free of charge. We plan to stay here next time we are in the area. On day 4, we headed over to the ACI marina called Palmizana, which is literally right behind the mooring fields of Uvala Vinogradisce. 
The entrance to Marina Palmizana is wide and the approach is straightforward. The marina has around 180 visitor birds. It is often full here in the high season, but the day we arrived, there were only a handful of boats. The bay is sheltered from most weather except strong northerly bora winds. The marina fee is typically 730 kunas or around 120 US dollars, which we didn't have to pay for. We just took an exhilarating water taxi over from where our boat is currently berthed at the ACI Marina to the city of Var. It's absolutely stunning and gorgeous. We're gonna explore a little bit, walk up to the castle and the fortress. Croatia never disappoints. It's just stunning. Yeah. Every city is gorgeous. The sailing has been fantastic. Yeah. We're really having a blast. I think it's, this is probably one of my favorites so far. I haven't seen much, but this island is really charming. Very historic uh, and um, the architecture is unbelievable. Um, yeah, tomorrow we're going to head over to Viz, which everyone who's been to Croatia, um, at least in our network, has said definitely a must see. So. So yeah. we'll see it. It's just literally each day keeps getting better and better. There's a cay in town of Huar where you can dock for 560 kunas or around 90 US dollars for a 45 foot boat. Radio for dock assistance here on channel 9. Most marinas in Croatia use channel 17, but channel 9 is used for port communications. basil gelato in the back drop of VAR. What could be better? Do it, do it. If you go to San Francisco. <laughs> Now we take off to the nearby island of Vis, which is about a 14 nautical mile sail. Once you come into the harbor of Vis, there are a few options. There are two keys to dock your boat at the Vis key and the Kut key, and also some mooring fields and the option to anchor. Our first attempt was the Vis key, but once we approached, we couldn't find a dock hand to help us tie up our lines. We tried to radio a few times, but no one responded. So we decided to pick up a mooring ball, and that's when things got a little exciting and we lost our boat hook overboard. Good thing boat hooks float, but this one quickly floated away from our boat and into the harbor. Here is Kavanch swimming after it. After giving our neighbors a show and finally tying off to that mooring ball, 
a dinghy from the harbor approached us and told us we cannot stay on these mooring balls as they're privately owned. So we ended up at the Kutke, which turned out great. And this is definitely our recommendation when coming to Vis Harbor. Here are the costs for Vis Harbor for a 45 foot boat. The Vis Key near the ferry dock runs 980 kunas or about 160 US dollars a night. The Kut Key where we stayed is normally 610 kunas or 100 US dollars a night. But we were able to negotiate with them and we stayed here for two nights for the price of one. Not likely to happen during high season or when tra travel comes back to normal here. Today is May 10th and we arrived at the beautiful island of Vis. We docked our boat in a gorgeous spot. And it's also Kavanch and my anniversary. It's been 17 years. And we figured out that it's also been 17 days since we both have been living on board CB. The next day we rented a scooter and drove to the other side of the island to the city of Kumiza. dock at the town key in Kumiza for around 570 kunas or 92 US dollars per night. Again, this is for a 45 foot boat. I think you're probably getting the point by now that anything connected to sailing in Croatia is pretty expensive, even during the pandemic when so many charter companies are unable to book sailing vacations. This week we did splurge a little bit on our first passage, but moving forward, it will mostly be anchorages and looking for deals. Day 7 we leave the island of Biz and head back east about 42 nautical miles to the island of Korchula. This evening we overnight at a bay called Luka Banya, not too far from Old Town Korchula. We tied to a mooring ball in the bay which we didn't need to pay for. The restaurant looking after the mooring field was closed. During the season the restaurant will likely to open and you may need to dine here or have drinks to use the mooring balls. The weather turned in the morning of day 8, and we had rain most of the day during our last leg back to Solano. It wasn't up until later the weather changed once again, and clouds opened up as we rolled into our marina. Great time on that passage. The, the islands and the, the coast around southern Croatia is just absolutely stunning. So hopefully that was enjoyable and also a little informative uh, for those who are thinking to do some cruising or a charter over in Croatia. Again, that can be very easily done in about a week long charter. Um, we are back now at our marina in Solano and we are um, prepping and getting the boat ready for our next really big passage. Yeah, we're thinking about um, doing an overnight, a long passage. It's gonna be our first overnight in CB. 
uh, go up north in uh, a city called Pula, which is in northern uh, Croatia. And then uh, we're going to take our time and slowly sail down and do island hopping. Uh, come down to where we are, which is um, Solano, uh, a little north of the Um So, yeah, we've been taking baby steps and now we feel like we're ready and comfortable to do a, a yeah. nice long passage. So we're we, excited about that. We started doing little anchorages around here. Uh, we went to the nearby islands and did some um, day sails. And then we did this um, eight day passage that we, we just uh, shared with you. And the next step is going to be a little bit longer passage, so we're going to be gone for uh, almost a yeah, month. Yeah, a good month uh, or so. If everything works out. Uh, and we'll obviously document that, so that'll probably be a couple videos yeah. coming up on that month-long journey. But before that, yes. we're going to push another video, uh, which we got um, a lot of inquiries from, from the viewers about a boat tour. I'm going to, going to uh, share um, our boat CV with, with you. Uh, as well as the marina near Stain, which, which is at the back drop right now. It's the ACI Solano Marina, so we're gonna um, uh, share the marina, the entrance, the facilities and all that. Uh, we've been really happy with them. Yeah, it's amazing. So you'll, you'll, and you'll understand why when you see episode five. It's, it's a fabulous marina. Yeah. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for joining.